Okay, so let's talk a little bit about internet gateways and NAT gateways. So internet gateways. So we can just see in the docs for a quick explanation. The internet gateway is a horizontally scaled, redundant, highly available, blah, 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 VPC component that allows communication between your VPC and the internet. So this is the thing that allows the public internet to talk to your servers and your servers to talk to the public internet. It serves two purposes, to provide your target in the VPC route uh, VPC route tables for internet routable traffic and to perform network address translation for instances that have been assigned public IP addresses. So this basically lets your servers talk to the outside internet through a NAT and network address translation. So this is kind of fancy. You don't really need to know the internals of it. Basically, this is how your servers talk to the outside internet and how the outside internet talks to your servers. So through a subnet, your subnets have route tables. And the route table has a route, and one of those routes is going to be this little line here that just says to route all public traffic through the internet gateway. And this is the thing that makes your subnet, quote unquote, public. If a subnet is associated with a route table that has a route to the internet gateway, in other words, if this thing has internet gateway as a target for 000, /0 then it's known as a public subnet. In other words, the public internet can talk to servers inside of the subnet. If the subnet is associated with a route table that does not have an internet gateway, it's known as a private subnet because the outside internet cannot talk to servers inside of that subnet. Now, there's no subnet inside of this default VPC that matches that use case. So let's go ahead and just see if we want to create one. We'll create a subnet for our little VPC here, the default. We'll call it my private subnet. And let's see what our IP address ranges here are. I can't do slash 16. That's the entire size of the subnet, but I can do something small. And we have to find an IP address range here that won't overlap with one that already exists. We're going to do slash 20, because that's what the other ones are. And over here, I think 48 won't overlap with a subnet that already exists, uh, because you can't have overlapping IP addresses there. And we'll create this. And that created a subnet here called pri My Private Subnets. So we can see that's listed here, and it's part of that default VPC again. It has the same VPC ID. If we go to the subnet here in the route tables, there is a default default here, right? It is defaulted to setting it to the internet gateway, but that's not actually what we want. We would want this to go to something else. Now, what is that something else uh, to keep this network private? So that something else would be a NAT gateway. So let's go ahead and read about those. So if we head over here, we go to NAT devices, NAT gateways. There's also NAT instances, which is an old thing. NAT gateways is a managed service here that serves as a way to let our private network servers talk to the outside internet without the outside internet being able to talk to them. So you can use a network address translation NAT gateway to enable instances in a private subnet to connect to the internet or other AWS services, but prevent the internet from initiating a connection with those instances. So they're private. They can talk to the outside internet, but the outside internet can't talk to those. Now, NAT gateways have a charge, unlike the internet gateways. So NAT gateways are charged by the hour. I think in, at least in um, Ohio here, it is something like 0.045 cents per hour. So if you multiply that by 730 hours a month, they cost th about $32, $33 a month as a base cost. Now on top of that, they're charged, I believe the same per gigabyte uh, translated through that NAT gateway. So that's where your bigger expenses actually end up coming from. So if you do something like 100 gigabytes a month, which is pretty easy to do, you end up paying 450 for bandwidth charges through that NAT gateway. Now, this is on top of the fact that many people make multiple NAT gateways so that it's redundant, but you can make just one NAT gateway for your entire VPC if you want. That's something I'll show you later as well. So we would need to create a NAT gateway and then a new route table. And then that new route table would be part of our new subnet that we called private. And that would have a different entry in the route table here which would point to our NAT gateway instead of an internet gateway. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and actually show you that just yet because we're going to do that in a future video. But I wanted to give you an idea of what internet gateways versus NAT gateways were within your VPC so that you can get the idea of what a public versus private subnet really is. OK, so in the next video, I think it's finally time to actually go ahead and create a VPC. We're going to be using Terraform to do that, and you'll see the mechanics of using Terraform to create a VPC in your account that has all the stuff you might need. Public subnets with internet gateways, private subnets with NAT gateways, and some other options that you can do.